Hi everyone, welcome to search.gov first webinar of 2019, Indexing with search.gov. As you know, our program is a plug and play search solution that federal agencies can use to provide a high quality search experience to their site users. Our program is a service of the General Services Administration, supporting search boxes on over 2,000 websites across 30% of federal domains. Today, during this webinar, we will walk you through our indexing process with a focus on a new indexing help package that we've released, addressing the most common indexing questions we've received over the past year. The webinar is also an excellent opportunity to ask questions. You can ask the questions by posting them in the chat box in the YouTube channel. Or, if for some reason you cannot create a profile, you can send us your questions by email at search uh, at support.digitalgov.gov. Today, our instructor is Don Pointer McCleskish, who will uh, be guiding you through this webinar. She's a professional librarian on a mission to help people find what they are looking for. And she's also the program manager for search.gov, where she works to improve agency users' experience with the service and the public's experience when searching on government websites. Don, you can take it on. Thanks, Arantxa. We're really excited to be getting together with all of you today to go over the indexing process, because as she mentioned, we've received a lot of similar questions over the past year. And responding to that, we developed this set of new help documentation, which we hope will um, illuminate the process quite a bit. Um, there's a lot of interest in the inner workings of our system, which is fantastic. And we hope to be able to satisfy some of that curiosity today. So let's get to it. Since we have a mix of current users and new folks attending today, I wanted to take a moment to orient everyone to what we're talking about here. So I'm gonna make this a little bigger. There we go. Hope that's visible for everyone. So as Arantxa mentioned, search.gov supports the search function of about 30% of federal domains and within those domains, about 2000 different websites. Agencies create user accounts in our system to configure their search experience and then connect their websites to our system simply by modifying the search box form code to point at us rather than at an internal target. In addition to indexing docs, we recently published the search site launch guide. It's linked from our homepage and from the help manual landing page. The launch guide walks you through everything you'll want to do to get a search experience ready for, uh, to support your website. You'll notice that the middle section here is all about indexing. And we'll be focusing on this information later in the hour. Before we dive into that though, I wanted to show you the larger package of information that, uh, that we mentioned at the beginning. So our goal is to be as much of a self-service tool as possible. And these docs should support you getting into our index with perhaps only a couple emails with our team. So far, it's been taking quite a few more emails. <laughs> so the indexing section is linked from the homepage and from the help manual, and it lists all the information you might want to, uh, about indexing. At the top here, we have info on how search engines work and specifically how we work. So you can wrap your mind around the concepts and techniques and here we're really trying to demystify everything for you. Search engines can really seem like magic and they're not, they're just computers. So first there's a webinar I did last year um, about how search engines work and the slides included here contain a lot of links and examples. So that should be worth a glance. Then we have a set of new docs responding to the questions we've been receiving. What do you index? How do you rank results? How does the indexing process work? And perhaps my favorite, this one about how sitemaps control the content of search site results. And just kidding, they don't do that at all. So we'll talk about that in detail in a bit. The next sections are about SEO tools, search engine optimization tools that you can put in to support your whole domain or individual pages. 
these posts about sitemaps and robots.txt files we published last year, so you may have seen them already. And we'll talk more about these during the discussion of the indexing process. Then here on page level considerations, we also have pages we published a while ago and are bringing all of these together under this roof so you can find them more easily. The metadata elements we encourage you to include in your pages, as well as other signals you can add so that the search engines will be better able to index the real substance of your websites. So let's take a look at the new docs for a bit so we're all on the same page. When we index your site, of course you think about us collecting your content. If a page includes a main element, which I'm circling here, we'll skip over all the rest of the body, the headers, sidebars, footer, anything outside of the main element, and just collect that real, in air quotes, I know you can't see me right now, content of the page. If there's no main element, we'll collect the full body tag and then filter out the nav and footer elements. And if your pages don't include any of these, we'll index the full body. Or if it's a file, PDF, Excel, et cetera, we will uh, index that full content. We also collect a bunch of metadata, including standard elements and open graph protocol elements. We chose the open graph elements because we found they were most commonly implemented across government already. And indeed, they're really very easy to include via plugins for various content management systems. If you know you have open graph elements, it would, be, it would still be good to check on them because sometimes sites post a few fields, but not the date fields that you see mentioned here. We collect all the standard file formats, but I do want to point out that at this time, we can't index JavaScript page content. Google is still the only search engine with good indexing coverage for JavaScript content, and even they just last week said that it takes a lot longer to process and get those pages into their index. So if you have your pages displaying content with JavaScript, we recommend you pay extra attention to the description metadata that you are including in the head of your pages and make sure those descriptions include the keywords you want the page to be searchable for. All right, so ranking factors. Unlike the major search engines, we're publishing our ranking factors so you can understand how the different info we have about your content works together and hopefully improve the structure and description on your websites to get the better search performance you're looking for. And also because a lot of people have asked. So here we are. All right, so on Google, if you want to make sure that something will appear at the top of the results, you need to pay for an ad. Similarly, in our system, you need to set up a best bet in the admin center. For ranking regular results, we've supplemented the core ranking algorithm of our underlying search engine, which is Elasticsearch, with some attributes that are particularly useful to the government sites we support. Each document is scored for each of these factors, and then all of those sub, you know, component scores are multiplied together to make up the final relevance score. The ranking then is just the order of the items matching the query listed by score from highest to lowest. The first feedback we heard from sites that started using our index early on was that there were way too many PDFs showing up on page one, crowding out their own HTML format landing pages and just um, bogging things down. So we added a preference for HTML format content. It doesn't matter what the file extension is. If it's HTML, um, we, we will prefer it. The next feedback we got was about how much old content was showing up at the top of the results. So we added demotion for older content, which starts when a document is 30 days old and then gets stronger, the demotion gets stronger as the document gets older. Pages or files with no date metadata at all are considered permafresh, so they don't get demoted. The most recent thing we added last month was a consideration of how popular a page is. Right now, we're measuring this in terms of how many times a URL has been clicked on from the search results. 
And then finally, I included information here about the core Elasticsearch ranking algorithm, which in rough terms looks at how many term matches there are between the query terms and each document, balanced against how common or rare those terms are and how long the document is. So you can imagine how under this core model, a PDF from eight years ago might get scored higher than a web page about congressional testimony from a month ago. So now that we consider file type, freshness, and popularity, we're able to elevate that newer, shorter page to where it's visible to searchers. The last doc I want to talk about now is this one about the relationship between sitemaps and search results. We've had requests from customers to index the content on sitemap A and attach it to one search site, and then to index sitemap B, which has some overlap with the content on sitemap A, and attach it to another secondary search site. Because they're working on the understanding that the list of URLs on the sitemap itself is what will get searched from the relevant search site. But this isn't how it works, though. So I came up with this metaphor to describe it. Um, I won't read this whole page to you today, but imagine if you imagine a lake with a bunch of tributaries feeding into it and fishing boats out on the open water, the lake is our index, the tributaries are the site maps flowing in, and all your various search sites are the fishing boats set to pull the right fish out of the water. So I made this diagram and as you see, I am not a graphic designer, but hopefully it helps communicate. Let me make this smaller so you can see it. Helps communicate the relationships of the inputs that the sitemaps serve into the index and the outputs that the search sites control while the public is searching your websites. So now would be a good time to stop for questions. Aranja, have we gotten any? There is a question here relevant to the section. Great. We're new to your service. Do you have a sandbox environment we can use to test it out? Yes and no. So our system, in our system, when you establish a search site, whether it's the production one you'll use connected to your website or if it's uh, just a playground area for you, all of that is in production on in our environment. The, the difference is whether or not a search site is receiving queries from your website. So if you want to have a sandbox area to try things out, um, there are two ways you can do it. One is to set up two search sites. One is the, the once and future search site that will be attached to your search box. And then you could have a, you know, my site handle dash dev equivalent sandbox version area that never gets attached to any live search box at all. And then you can play around in that. Uh, so there are two, uh, two ways you can do it. If you're brand new to the service though, the search site that you're setting up to attach to your website is essentially a pre-production environment because it's not it's not live until you connect it to your search box. How, uh, are there any other questions that have come in? Not at this time, Don. Okay, great. All right. So let's turn now to the indexing process itself. Okay, so I mentioned earlier, the process is documented within the site launch guide here. And I've tried to point out the differences in, within the documentation, I've tried to point out the differences in experience that brand new customers will have versus those who are already live with us. So the process is basically the same, except when it comes to time to shift your results onto our index. So the first thing we do is look at your current search traffic as a guide for what index we'll use to support your site. 
For many years, our service was able to use the Bing Index at no cost. And since we ourselves are available to agencies at no cost, it was an easy model to expand our coverage within the government web space, especially with budgets getting tighter across the board. For the past few years, though, GSA has been paying for the Bing results. And since one of our goals is to streamline the cost of search government wide, as you can imagine, it's not sustainable to have rapidly increasing market share and search costs within our own budget, which is often under continuing resolution, just like yours. So a year and a half ago, we, just, uh, we started building and improving on our own web index to support all but the smallest sites and the couple of sites that truly have full government search scopes like USA.gov and FOIA.gov. In those cases, it is still more cost effective to use the Bing index rather than index and keep up to date with who knows how many potential small sites may come our way. So the threshold we've set for indexing with us is 150,000 queries per year. Some of the biggest sites using our service see this level of traffic in a week. So 150,000 per year is, is pretty small. Uh, if you're under this level, though, and not really happy with how your site results from Bing look, or if you have a site relaunch coming and your site will need to be re-indexed anyway, we'd be happy to index you directly. So please do reach out. If you're above the threshold and we haven't talked to you yet, or if we have talked to you but it's been a while, don't worry, we'll reach out. We haven't forgotten about you, we're just incorporating your feedback. Once we've determined that we will be indexing your site, we'll work with you to determine which domains you want us to index and track over time. Lots of times, this is as simple as getting the list of your subdomains. Some search sites, though, are set up to provide a portal search experience. And the agency web team we're working with doesn't always manage all the websites they want to search. So it gets more complex. In our old model, you could just list the second level domain or domains like example.gov and subagency domain example.gov. And we would send those domains off to Bing's big lake of an index and fish out whatever they might have for you that matches the query. In the new model, though, we need to make sure we have the right fish in our lake. So we need to make sure we have all the right tributaries connected and flowing into the lake. In this example here, for example.gov, we're going to track the www, data, and archive subdomains, and then also the www subdomain of subagency domain example.gov. And so these, uh, this would be the scope that is searched when someone uses the search box for this search site. If you know your domain has hundreds of subdomains, though, and your main website acts as a conduit to those subdomain websites, it's probably just as effective from a search and wayfinding perspective to search against just the largest subdomains and line office subdomains as it is to search all the sub, sub, subdomains of all of the websites and sub websites. It's certainly more efficient from an indexing perspective, as you'll see in a bit. And major agencies do do this, by the way. NASA has about 3,000 subdomains, and they only search against 15 of them. So possible. The next, after we've determined the subdomains, the next thing we'll do is research each of the subdomains that we've agreed on with you to see what platform it's published on and whether it has a comprehensive, up-to-date sitemap or not. As I mentioned before, monitoring sitemaps is our way of indexing your sites and keeping the index up-to-date over time. It's our preferred way. We do have a crawler but we don't use it as part of our automated process because the processing power and time required to get all the way through even one large site is super high. 
and it can take weeks to get through the largest websites. So we have our help page about sitemaps linked here. This is the same one that's available from the indexing landing page. Oh, geez. I moved it. And the redirect wasn't working. Apologies. So this page will take you through all of the particulars. But at a high level, a sitemap is a computer-friendly XML format inventory of the content on your domain. Now, I say domain here rather than website because any given sitemap needs to contain URLs from only one domain. And a website might contain several subdomains depending on your worldview. You can have multiple sitemaps for a given domain, which is helpful if you have content coming from multiple platforms or have more items than the 50,000 URL maximum that a single sitemap can contain. If you have more than one sitemap, though, you'll need to list them on your robots.txt file and or use a sitemap index format. So you can check out this page to see which is appropriate for you, maybe both. And then if for some reason you're not able to list a sitemap on your robots.txt, or you had to put your or and you had to put your sitemap in a non-standard location, let us know via email where it is and we'll enter the location in the back end of our system. There's not a place in the admin center to submit a sitemap at this time. So hopefully your content management system has a plugin that will automatically generate and maintain a sitemap for you. One thing to watch out for is whether PDFs and other static files you've uploaded to your CMS will be included. They may be included by default, or you may need to switch something on in order to include them, or they may not be able to be included automatically. The Drupal 7 sitemap module gives you the option of including files, but you have to enter them one by one, which is basically a non-starter for everybody. <laughs> so. Um, if, uh, if they're not able to be easily added automatically, or maybe they're stored in a static file server or something, in this case, you may need a second sitemap solution. And we have recommendations at the bottom of, uh, of this sitemaps page. And then uh, including some, some generators, there are some local tools we also uh, have experience with. So hopefully your content management system has a plugin. But if you need to use a sitemap generator, that is helpful for sites without content management systems as, at all. If you need help picking out one that's right for your setup, you can reach out to us and we can talk to you through your situation. If you do use a generator, though, we recommend that you set it to ignore query strings the versions of URLs where it has a question mark and then some kind of other information that pulls the page display based on those criteria that follow the question mark. So we, we recommend that you set it to ignore those query strings when the sitemap generator is crawling your site, unless the query strings are totally necessary for displaying your page content. Um, and that's to avoid things like, you know, list of interesting things, page one, list of interesting things, page two, page three, et cetera, or page two, sort by date, or other kinds of uh, sorting and display parameters. If you have a document ID that that query, is, query string is calling, that is the only way that your page is going to display the appropriate content, then by all means, yes, include the query strings uh, in the list you develop for your, for your sitemap. And then thirdly, not related to sitemaps, if you have static content that doesn't change very often, you can just set a, send us a list, a flat list of URLs by email, and we can index from that. If you don't have sitemaps already, 
we do encourage, strongly encourage you to stand one up, not only because it'll help us support you into the future, but the commercial engines work with them too, and it should improve your index coverage out there. Okay, so you've got a comprehensive and current sitemap posted for each of the domains we're going to be indexing. Yay, what happens now? So first, wrong section. So first we tell our system to start indexing each of the domains. Then the system captures all the URLs from your sitemaps. One of the benefits of working with us is that we understand government content and coverage needs better than commercial engines. You may have noticed that with some of your drier, repetitive content that uh, Googlebot and Bingbot don't pick up all of the inv individual files. And their official policy is to pick up what they determine to be the most important and useful information on the web. But since we're within government, we know that even though your tens of thousands of nearly identical PDFs are actually foreign agent registration forms, and they do all in fact need to be retrievable through search, we're not going to make any decisions about what URLs to include or exclude from your search experience beyond agreeing with you on the subdomains. If there are URLs you want to exclude from indexing, we have a help page on that uh, available from the indexing landing page. That's the one about, um, about how to get search engines to index the right content for better discoverability. So. After we collect your URLs, then we fetch your content. There are a few stages to this. We visit each URL, we render the HTML, and then we gather all the content we talked about earlier in this hour on the what does search.gov index from your website uh, page. When we come to your site, we'll make one request per second or follow the crawl delay set in your robots.txt file, whichever is slower, and will always come from the same IP addresses with the same user agent, so you can easily identify us. There are some firewall protections that still trigger a block on us, though, even though we work very slowly and respectfully, so there is a chance we may need to ask you to whitelist our IPs. Um, startup indexing is always the heaviest load of requests, and daily updates are very light, catching whichever you know couple score pages may be uh, new or updated that day. We visit sitemaps daily at 4 a.m. Eastern to check for new or updated pages. Ideally, your sitemap will include a last mod date that will get updated when a page gets updated. So we'll pick up those changes on a daily basis. For any pages that haven't been updated in a while, we do a monthly sweep to check for 404s or 301 redirects and update the index in accordingly to remove items, replace items. If there's something you need removed right away, then you can email or call and we can just take care of it for you manually. So, after the content is indexed, we move into testing and review. For brand new customers, the following steps will probably take place in the search site you're getting ready to be your production site. For sites transitioning from Bing, our team will test the new index using your most popular queries to make sure things look okay. And we do this in a clone of your production search site so we'll be able to see the new index in the context of all of the features you've set up for your searchers. Best bets, YouTube videos, all of that good stuff. When we think it looks good, we'll share the test site with you and your team will then make sure that your relevant stakeholders, internal stakeholders have a chance to review, provide feedback and ask questions. And then 
together, we will iterate. So for instance, one agency had, cons we ran our test plan and shared the, uh, the review site with the, the agency. And when they looked at it, they had concerns about old content ranking high and also about irrelevant pages being returned. So when we looked into it, it turned out that they hadn't added date metadata yet. They had other open graph elements, but not dates. And their main tag was enclosing the side rails. So we were matching on that side rail menu text. We were able to identify these issues based on their feedback. They were then able to add date fields and move the location of their main tag. And we refetched their pages to pick up these changes. And we saw a marked improvement in how the results were being handled. So lather, rinse, repeat. When the search experience gets a green light, we're ready to launch the index for you. And as I said earlier, for new customers, your search site will already be attached to the index. So you can proceed with the rest of the steps for going live with our service. For sites transitioning from Bing, the last thing you need to do, last thing you need to do is give the OK. And then we will disconnect your existing search site from Bing and attach it to our index by ch changing a setting in the back end. All your other search features and branding, all of that remains the same. And just the portion of the results page that used to show Bing results will now be powered by search.gov. And you'll be able to see that attribution at the bottom. The change is effective immediately. So there's no delay for propagation or anything like that. So to quickly review the steps, get in here. So here we've got our nice <laughs> sub process here. Um, <laughs> there are several steps involved, but I hope it sounds pretty straightforward. So first we decide whether or not we're going to index your site ourselves or support you on the Bing index. And we probably will index you ourselves. <laughs> then we agree with you on what domains and subdomains we're going to be indexing for you. We research those, sub -do uh, those domains and work with you to make sure there's a sitemap in place for each of the domains. As I mentioned, putting sitemaps up is definitely win-win when it comes to working with us and the commercial engines. Then we do the work of indexing the subdomains and we test it, we review the index with you, you review it with internal stakeholders. When you're ready, you give a final green light and we send the index live for you with that backend settings changed. And that's it. So easy as pie, I hope. <laughs> it's a little bit more labor intensive than making a pie, but some people are really afraid of making pie. So who knows? Uh, so that's the end of the presentation portion, and we can take more questions now uh, if we've gotten any. Have any come in, Arancha? Yeah, actually we have three questions come in, so I'm going to um, tell you the first one. Um, will you index our staging site full of demo content? Oh, demo content. Okay. So we get this request a fair amount, uh, which makes sense. We have sites who are developing a new relaunch site and in a staging environment and it's full of it's full of test content uh, if the test site if the demo server is publicly available yes we can index it um, if it is password protected or has any sort of IP access restrictions on it then we are not supposed to index it. Our authorization to operate is only for publicly available content, and we're not supposed to include any secure content. Um, you could argue that your demo staging server content doesn't have any value, but still that's, um, that's we're not supposed to. So uh, if you're able to put it in a public, open the server 
so that it could be available. But then you can put a robots.txt file on that top level to keep it from being indexed in Google and Bing, et cetera. Um, more on that on our robots.txt help file. Uh, then you can, we could index, but then Google and Bing would not be able, to, it wouldn't get into their stuff. Um, so it has to be publicly available. You mentioned there were some other questions. Yes, the second question we have says, how do you re-index our content if I relaunch my website and I don't want the old content to show? Okay. So this is another question that comes up quite a bit. And uh, it's always great when this question comes ahead of the relaunch, but we do have a lot of people call us with this question after the relaunch. <laughs> help, help, help. My site relaunched yesterday and all the search results still have the old domain or the old folder structure in it. Things are 404ing, what do we do? So, it does take time to rebuild a search index uh, after a relaunch. And so what we recommend is that you contact us ahead of time so that we can, um, in this case, most people relaunching are going to be using the Bing index. So we would kind of have a parallel path going on where we would um, work with you to figure out what the domains and subdomains are for the uh, relaunched website, just as we uh, went through with the process. And then what we would need to do is work with you to coordinate a, an indexing of that content after a soft launch of your website. So you sort of open it up, you don't tell anybody about it, and then, you, and then we can come in and index, and then you have your big press release the next day and the search results are ready to go. In the meantime, we've already switched your web results to the to the new, let me back up. So the old site <laughs> is at the time you're ready to make the switch from the old site to the new site, that's the moment that we wanna switch the index supporting the website. So our backend setting change should come right around the change in, in your, you know, which platform is producing your, your public website. Um, if that is complicated for whatever reason, which totally fair if that's complicated, another stopgap measure that we can do, that we can use is get, uh, that you could use are a feature called, I'm not in the admin center for this webinar, but we have a feature in the admin center called search page alert. And you can use that to post a, you know, welcome to our relaunched site, we're rebuilding the search index. Thank you for your patience. It will be ready for you soon. So there's that, or a combination of the two: soft launch, start indexing, you know, make your big announcement, po have the pardon our dust message up on the search results page so people know that uh, that they might need to wait for a little bit. Even though that might sound less than ideal, it's still better than incorrect search results entirely. Um, or waiting it out to see if Bing will crawl through your site. We've had we've seen major sites relaunch and have it take six weeks for the 404s to clear out of the Bing index, which is really unacceptable, right? So that's another thing we're happy about with controlling our own index is that we can manage that timing with you. So getting ahead of the ball is great for site relaunches. <laughs> is there any other? Uh... Any other questions? Yes, uh, we have another question. Uh, it's uh, asking, how do we know new added content is also indexed? Okay, so we don't at this time have a way for you to view the, the list of URLs that we have indexed for you. So from your side of things, one of the easiest things to do would be to find the most unique phrase on that page and search for it in the index. And if it comes up, then great, it's indexed. If it doesn't come up, then you could reach out to us. We may want to do some investigation as to why we haven't gotten that page yet. Um, in the case where our sitemap updater has come through and then you post something that you want to make sure is indexed uh, and available through search right away, the 
best thing to do there is to make a best bet for it. If you want to go totally self-serve, you can just post it there at the top. Or you can send us an email or give us a call to say, hey, I've got this URL that I need indexed right now. We can manually add an individual URL to the, to the index. Um, similarly, we can check on individual URLs uh, to see their status. So always happy to help. So that's that. Yeah, we don't have any further questions at this time. All right. So I think that brings us to the end of our time. Yes. So thank you very much, everybody, for participating today. You can always send us your questions if you think of any after the webinar is over at search um, at search. Sorry, search at support digitalgov.gov. Uh, the recording will be available on the event page on digital.gov and also we will be posting it on our website. Thanks everybody. Have a good afternoon.